Hey, what's up guys, Arava here, and welcome back to another episode of my F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 114 today for Season 7, the Belgium Grand Prix. Guys, if you did miss the previous one, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one, the sprint race at the Hungarian Grand Prix. And it was a bit of a madness of an episode in the race, and also before it, of course, because we had another mid-season kind of driver transfer market fiasco, where a couple of big names were moving teams, so definitely go check that episode out uh, to get clued in or everything. And of course, the race itself was rather spicy, let, let's put it that way, and off the back of it, we still lead the Drivers' Championship. It is still one point in it between myself and Pierre Gasly, but now our rivals have closed up a little bit to us, and things have maybe got a little bit frostier in the team between myself and Pierre Gasly. And now, obviously, we're over the halfway point in the season, so, you know, the tension's only going to get higher and higher in terms of not only between our, ourselves internally with the team, but also the, you know, our other rivals, Leclerc there, Giovinazzi, Verstappen, all still very much in touching distance of us. So we've definitely got to just keep focus, get our head down and move on from what happened in the last race at Hungary. And we now come here with a fresh slate to the Belgium Grand Prix. Sunny skies right now, but I believe there is some rain in the air for this race weekend for Saturday and for Sunday. So that's going to spice things up. But right now, Q1 settings, we're going to start off with a fully dry uh, track with the sun out. But I think as we go on through the day, the clouds are going to come in and the rain is going to start. But let's just get through uh, into Q2, hopefully just a formality for us. And trying to size up what the pace is going to be like around here for our car versus the other teams. You know, usually the, the My Team car goes well around here. But we've had uh, some ferocious, obviously, competition as of like, this whole season. So there's no guarantee on that. And so it looks like Leclerc is starting off strong. Lungard up there. P2 and then Bottas in his new Red Bull Honda being a bit more comfortable I guess in the second race they're up in P3 and we're looking to be very closely matched with Pierre Gasly right now in Q1 uh, we'll have to see how it goes into Q2 and then Q3 but if we you know line up next to each other or very near to each other on the grid I'm sure that's going to set us up for some potential fireworks maybe in the opening laps but I'm hoping to get one over him you know he's had the measure of us for most of this season I felt like at the start of the, of the, of the season we had more pace than him over one lap and then in the races he was luckily getting ahead of us but then it's turned into just out and out ha has had pace over us on Saturday and the Sunday and there's been so many occasions where I've just been left like oh I, I just don't have the same pace as he's had he's managed to just jump ahead of us even when it looked like he's been on a worse strategy he's ended up ahead of us somehow so let's try and you know keep the lead of the championship and try and get one over him but into Q3 then you lose your suspects Giovinazzi, Leclerc, Verstappen but both Red Bull Hondas the new partnership of Sainz and Bottas are through. Russell is through in the Ferrari. So last time out, Ocon was the one you know, in qualifying, at least I know the race went a little bit differently, but for Ocon he was massively improved with the Ferrari last episode. Potentially that was, you know, seeing Russell come in and feeling the threat but now it seems like Russell's got to grips with the car and showing why Ferrari maybe signed him mid-season to try and drag that Ferrari back into some points as they try and clamber up the Constructors' uh, Championship Championship order, obviously, from uh, you know their staple, you know, bottom three. Well, you know, the likes with uh, Mercedes and uh, BMW Samba. We're now into Q3. As you can see, it's still sunny then in this last part of qualifying. So this is the lap for this session for everyone. It's effectively going to be like a one-shot qualifying because when the rain comes down, obviously the track's just going to be slower. So uh, this is it. We're going to try and nail it as we go through the final corners. It's a pretty good exit, actually. Not a lot of wheel spin. And across the line, P4 ahead of Gasly. Behind Russell, though, in the Ferrari and Verstappen there. And you can see it's very doom and gloom now. Overcast. The clouds are coming in. And you can see now that rain, 20%. It's here. It is starting to rain and so that was it in the end I think some uh, one other person got a lap time in better than us so we moved down to P5 then but we are going to out qualify Gasly just about things are super super close once again between myself and him but Giovinazzi takes pole position alongside Leclerc Verstappen ever consistent and present there on the second row but George Russell what a performance for him finally getting to grips with that Ferrari in the second race only and he's up there in the second row that is just insane for us 
us, then at least we beat Gasly, but I would have liked to have been maybe ahead at least of the Ferrari. I feel we could have done that today, but Russell just, you know, proving why Ferrari have signed him. But the Red Bulls look also quite close to us, you know, so you know, they could be a threat maybe. I think around Hungary, they didn't show the exact pace I thought they would do, so maybe around here might be a different story. Stroll down in P9, and then Lando Norris rounds out the top 10. So let's go to the grid for a potentially a dry to wet race. Welcome along then to the Belgian Grand Prix, the race that gave us the maiden victory for the Jordan team in 1998. And in the same team, the phenomenal debut of a young Michael Schumacher. There's always something special around one of the many corners of this fan favorite circuit. Spa-Francorchamps then, a historic 19 corner circuit with a lap distance of 4.35 miles. There's over 100 meters of elevation change here and with long stretches of the lap spent flat out, a good top speed will be vital for success. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Why don't we discuss McLaren? What do you make of their performance so far this season? Well, the atmosphere within that team seems very positive at the moment. Everyone seems like they're in great spirits and having a lot of fun doing what they do, and that's definitely contributed to the performances we've seen. It's time to take a look at our starting grid for today's race. Antonio Giovinazzi put in a fantastic lap yesterday, and he'll start from pole position. And it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Considering the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, the owner driver, and Sainz, Bottas, Stroll, Norris and Esteban Ocon, Drogovic, Lundgaard, Yuki Tsunoda and Joe, Armstrong, Gasly, Mick Schumacher and Jack Aitken, Eilert, Hamilton, Matsushita and Daniel Tictum. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. Right, so interesting development then for Pierre Gasly. He gets a 10 place grid penalty. I'm assuming for at least changing one component on, on his power unit. So he's down in now P16. That is a, a, a much bigger challenge now. What is quite a close grid to come back through into strong points with also the added challenge of there's going to be a lot of rain going on to the, towards the end of this race. It seems like it might even be like, you know, a, a chance of even heavy rain for a moment there. But then it goes back to just overcast, uh, according to the weather forecast. So I don't know. Maybe they, maybe it's just going to be like touch and go. We're going to be on inters, and it might towards right at the end of the race be time for the full wets. But we're all just, all just going to have to brave it. But for the first stint, it's just going to be about trying to get the most out of that soft tire before it starts to wear out. Definitely going on to medium tires because we know we're going to have to make that pit stop for wets later on. So no point even contemplating the hard compound. But here we go then to five red lights to the Belgium Grand Prix here from Spa. We've got a great chance today to score some points on our teammate. Lights are out and we're underway. It's a good stop for Verstappen. It's a slow one for the pole sitter. Giovinazzi loses first place into turn one. Leclerc leads in the Porsche. We're down the inside of George Russell trying to get up into P4 but the Ferrari is gaining on us. Even with ERS he pulls alongside as the Ferrari rapid as we go side by side now up the hill but we've got it all crossed up and we're spun round at the top of our rouge and there's a massive Massive crash! It's a it's a 10 car pileup. Absolutely devastating incident and crash for so many drivers. Somehow we're still in this race, but we've got no front wing. We've got a five second penalty. Gasly now is ahead of us in P11, but he even got damage in that. So both of us have no front wing, I believe. We both have to make an early pit stop now. That's a disaster, and it's all come from this trying to keep it side by side with Russell and my right. Tire just got on the curb, snatched round, and you're going so quickly, it just snaps at you whilst you try and control it. You have the Red Bull who crashed with me initially, and then as I span round and went backwards, obviously I just caused a massive pileup with I think it was Lando Norris braking to try and avoid me, but obviously then that just meant everyone re re rear ended him and uh, just went into the back of each other. But you can see there in slow mo, uh, the, the oh, science gets caught out straight to the top of the hill, and this is the onboard from. Norris there so at this point he's just thinking oh dear god I'm gonna try and slam on the brakes to avoid me he does make contact my front wing brakes because of the Porsche and then look at this absolute carnage just a domino effect of everyone breaking their car 
damaging their car to the point of no return. For Gasly, he got quite lucky. He somehow only got caught up with the front wing uh, breakage. Uh, others completely straight out of this Grand Prix. We've only got 14 runners now in this race. So that was an eight car DNF crash. And that did not include me somehow. That was crazy. That, that was uh, such a disaster way to start this Grand Prix. But also a miracle in itself that I'm still in this race. And actually, to be fair, the likes of Gasly as well. Because, you know, if you look back at that replay, he was pretty much in the thick of it. And so the fact he only came away with front wing damage is, is not too bad, to be honest. So my pit crew had to wait five seconds there before they can actually do anything on the car. Already got delayed a little bit by Gasly with a double stack. But of course, it doesn't matter. We are under safety car. So we'll get that new front wing on. We put on a set of medium tires. In a, in a way, it's not a complete... You know, we could pull it back a bit because we, if we can stretch this medium all the way to when the rain comes, we actually could be in an okay position because, of course, everyone ahead of us that were in the top 10 still that didn't get caught up in that incident, they've not pit. So they're still, they're still going to have to pit for that set of mediums. Uh, so in a way, it could be a blessing in disguise, you know, funny enough, making a pit stop under the safety car but of course we're down in p14 rather than you know being up there in the top 10 and obviously still it wasn't the most ideal start of the race but I, I think you know as we go on through this one we might just see it unfold that it might come back towards us and come back towards Gasly because yeah though they're gonna have to make a medium tire pit stop around what like lap six to seven eight and then the rain's going to start falling down and we'll still be there out already on these mediums. So you can see what I mean. We're going to have track position. So um, we'll, so we'll see how we, pro how we progress. But we overtake Tickton there very easily in the Mercedes up the road on that same lap then. Sonoda versus Valtteri Bottas there. And the McLaren trying to make an overtake work on the outside to the inside for the next right hand. It's a really good scrap between these two. The Japanese driver has the advantage of the racing line on the inside there. But the Finn's doing really well to keep his car round the outside. Gasly is getting caught up into that. And Otto Hamilton. And this is backing everyone into me. And there we are in the background there. We've joined the party. We've joined this train. Gasly now goes for a late lunge down the inside of Puon. Very, very close stuff there. Bit of contact made with the rear of the McLaren. And now we're getting involved. Trying to go round the outside of Hamilton. But we just get it all crossed up a little bit there. Too deep. Not enough grip to go round the outside and keep it tight on the line to actually make the overtake. So instead, we still look at the back of the Ford Performance car, but I can sense we can get Hamilton here probably as we go through towards Blanchimont on the right hand side. Can we just do this with a pure drag race? Uh, Hamilton places his car very well uh, in the middle of the circuit to block us off, but now can we get a move done into the bus stop chicane as it's already getting overcast here, so confirmation very much the rain is going to be on the way. We give Hamilton a good old squeeze on the inside and get the move finished up on the exit, although I thought I would, but Hamilton comes back at me again even though I'm using, using ERS some of these guys are getting such better traction out of these corners here I don't know what it is with the AI they're just pin perfect sometimes uh, at certain circuits when it comes to the acceleration out of corners but we're able to maintain that thankfully to turn one ahead of Hamilton further up the road uh, Sonoda not really battling Bottas anymore he's kind of backed into to Gasly and Gasly now may make a move here to get up into P11 slowly making his way into the points paying positions there he is up into one championship point but like I said there's probably more to come you've got all those guys you know well ahead of Gasly because even Bottas is on the softs I believe so everyone ahead of Gasly starts to make that pit stop so you could actually see Gasly, Sonoda and myself uh, being the top three in this race when they make that first round of pit stop but at the moment focus on just trying to get Sonoda first and foremost and then kind of use him as a bit of a catapult with a DRS to maybe try and chase after Gasly we have a great run up there hill through Randy or now down the Kemmel straight Sonoda squeezes us a little bit but ultimately we're able to fly past there with some good ERS usage but also saving enough for the last sector yellow flags behind and oh Sonoda is out of the Grand Prix he's had a mechanical failure and maybe that's why he was actually sitting duck there because he did have DRS actually off Gasly but was still I still breeze past him so maybe that's why he had a car issue that was slowing his car down a bit in a straight line maybe and ultimately he's had to retire so, uh, you know, a high attrition rate in this Grand Prix. We've had how many? Like nine DNFs now in this one. And now you can see that first round of pit stops have been made. You've got Bottas fighting Guan Yu Zhou for the race lead right now. Those two, though, still have to make their pit stop. And they're both on the soft compound. But we're catching Gasly now. And this could be the fight for P1. 
one on track here because once these two get out of our way ahead of us, it'll be me versus Gasly. So this is, oh, after what happened at Hungary, this is going to be intense if myself and him are battling toe-to-toe -to -toe straight away at the next round for the race win here at a slippery Belgium Grand Prix. We're trying to now slip round down the inside at the bus stop chicane. The rain is out and it's very slippery out there as I lose the back end as a Hamilton overtakes us. He's up into P3 and he's here legitimately as well as we get it. Oh no! Double lock up into turn one. We nearly rear-ended Hamilton there having to go straight on and use a bit of the grass to try to take avoiding action. And now you can see the track is damp enough for Inters but I just couldn't make the overtake on Hamilton we're so close to him on the rear end. It's going to be a double stack for us. We nearly almost deck it into the wall there as well, as conditions are very treacherous. But Grand New Joe then, I actually mistakenly thought he was on the softs. He wasn't. He was on medium. So he's in this fight with Gasly, Hamilton, and myself. And this is going to be a bit painful with this double stack there. Gasly comes in. Oh, what the? What the hell is up in there? That was the quickest pit stop for Gasly I've ever seen. And then we've done a, a ghosted double stack? I don't know what just happened there. I don't know what. We lost out still time to Dan Tictum. So we still de did get penalised for doing the double stack, clearly. Because we've come out behind the Mercedes car. But I don't know what actually went on there with, the, with me ghosting through Gasly's car. And him going straight away as soon as I came into the pit box, effectively. Never seen that. Bit of an odd glitch. But we'll move past it. We've got to try now re-overtake the Mercedes car that we lost the position to. But it is indeed Guan Yu Zhou in the lead of this race. Then it's Hamilton in P2, because Gasly, I don't know, I don't know what happened, but he got jumped in the pit stops, so or Hamilton just overtook him straight away, and we haven't seen it, but Gasly's down to P3. Hamilton in a lofty P2 position right now in tricky conditions, doing very well in the forward. But you can see now all those guys who did not make a pit stop under the safety car, even though they didn't get caught up in that crash, they're behind us. They got penalized for not making the most of that safety car because now Giovinazzi, the highest man there, P6, Leclerc P7, uh, Verstappen 8, Russell 9th, and then Schumacher 10th, I believe. So this is a very interesting fight for the race league. Guan Yu Zhou the Williams defending against Hamilton, but he's locked up a little bit. He's gone wide. Hamilton down the inside. Very tricky conditions. Easy to make mistakes. And is Hamilton going to show his class and show that the form is temporary? But he's still got it, maybe, to win this race even. Because he's side by side right up the hill. And he will take the lead. He'll commit. But there comes Pierre Gasly on the right-hand side to make it three abreast momentarily for the race lead. Is Gasly going to steal this win again like he did in Canada? A three wide moment round the outside no it will be Hamilton still side by side with Grand New Joe Gasly gets squeezed out and had to back out of it and now we've joined the party can we try and roll this car through be a bit cheeky round the outside feather the throttle bit of drifting necessary but we're actually going to dance our car round the outside of Gasly what a move that was opposite lock for both corners drifting it round the outside of Pierre but we've got it we're up into P3 a great overtake for us and now can we have a go at Hamilton and Grand New Joe and try and spoil their party? Because, of course, for Grand New Joe, it would be an amazing win for him and Williams. It seems like an age since his first win this season in the first round with that mad Bahrain Grand Prix. But then, of course, for Hamilton, what a story that would be if he could win this race. Of course, you know, he's been out of form all series. We've had glimpses of his revival in this Ford car. But can we spoil the party? We're pressurizing Hamilton. Grand New Joe is actually pulling away, looking to try and solidify. By his race lead, but oh, up the hill! No, he's lost the back end! He lost the back end! He's crashed! He's crashed at the top of the hill! Oh! We've got a puncher! We've got a puncher of uh, Guan Yu Zhou's debris damage! I can't believe it! I cannot believe it! We've got a puncher from his crash. A bit of his front wing or something must have been on the ground and we've gone over it. And so just like the Canadian Grand Prix last season, we've got a puncher from just debris and we've got rear wing damage now because at the top of the hill, the puncher happened, but it, it all happened so quickly. Just a subtle turn span the car just like that and I span it high speed into the wall and it's damaged my rear wing. So we've gone from maybe challenging for the race win, I thought it's all come crashing down again what a calamity of a race this this started with and now has become again it, you know we went from the bottom to the top to the bottom again all in one race and this is the rear end view look at that 
just up there. Literally, that must have been debris. And then that's the, there's that spin. That subtle little tiny jink. And obviously, with the puncher, it's just going to spin the car around. But look at the, the bottom left there. There you go. There you, you can actually spot that little bit of the front wing end plate, I think, of Granny Joe. That's what gave me the puncher. So I've hobbled back to the pits. We're under safety car because that was a big crash for Granny Joe. And we're last place in this race. But last place is P12. So to be fair, by the time we come in for this very slow pit stop, because I, the, the game does just doesn't know how to speed me up in the pit lane with the puncher and the auto speed uh, limit limited there so it's a very slow journey down to our pit box this is really painful but thankfully on this safety car even now, we still have a chance of maybe some points at least to limit the damage now to our rivals who are now all ahead of us. Gasly, Giovinazzi, Verstappen, Leclerc, all of them and the above, all ahead of us now um, because, because of that incident. So, but we are going to have a chance to at least limit the damage maybe. You know, could we try and overtake Bottas and Stroll and get at least one or two points here? We'll see. Rear wing damage. Yellow rear wing. Uh, we've had it before and it's been somewhat okay. Like, it's not as bad as you think Obviously, if there was more damage, it would be probably a lot worse. But yellow, it means it's the rear wing's been damaged a bit, but it's still obviously kind of intact. And it's just going to give us a little bit of a floating feeling into every brake zone. Probably more on the rear end when we're trying to get the power down. It'll just be a little bit oversteering, maybe a little bit floaty in some of those high-speed corners. But we go again then. Green flags, three laps left. What can we do? Can we try and get two positions to get us one championship point just for a little bit of damage control at all? Right at the end of this one. The rain is really coming down quite thick. For sure, if this race continued on for more laps, it would be time for the full wet tyres, I think, past the chequered flag as we look to make a move on Bottas. Cheekly trying to slip one down the inside. Easy does it. Pushing wide up into P11. And we're having to be quite harsh with the defence there and squeezing him out because I, I know I don't have the same amount of downforce now on the rear end. And by the way, as we enter the second last lap of the Grand Prix, Lewis Hamilton, you, you would have maybe uh, guessed then, leads this race. And with only two laps to go, surely he's got a great chance of winning this race as there's more drama. There's smoke coming out of the back of Pierre Gasly's car. Can you believe it? Just when he thought nothing else could happen in this race, something else has happened. We've only got 11 runners in this Grand Prix. Pierre Gasly, our teammate, our championship rival, has gone up in smokes with only two laps to go. Last minute drama changing this race again. As we've now got Giovinazzi up into P2, Leclerc P3, Verstappen P4. So literally all our rivals are up there in the top four positions there. You know, just off the top step that is uh, at the moment seated by Lewis Bloody Hamilton. As we go on towards the last lap of the Grand Prix, are we about to see the first win for four performance GP and F1? And is it going to be Hamilton of all people? Uh, as we look to make a move on Stroll, we're now up into P10 anyway because of the free position position from Pierre Gasly. So this is for two points now in the championship to help us at least limit the damage to Gio, Leclerc and Verstappen. At least we've been helped out by the fact that Gasly, we won't lose points to him now. We're going to gain points on him. Two points to be exact as I think P9 is going to be the highest position we can get as we go into the last stage of this race. The half, half a lap left, if that. One sector left. And look at this though. Giovinazzi is right up the gearbox of Hamilton. Giovinazzi's got way more pace it would seem. He's just finding these conditions a bit better. And Hamilton is looking quite slow. I think he's uh, struggling out there. And is this going to be some more late drama on the last lap of the Grand Prix into the last bend towards Bonchimon and the bus stop chicane? And Giovinazzi goes down the inside. He commits and he gets up into first place. The reigning world champion gets up into P1 in the last sector of the last lap of this Grand Prix in wet conditions and he is going to win the Belgium Grand Prix he cruelly, cruelly denies Ford their first win in Formula 1 and a Hamilton's win uh, in a long, long time but what a mental, mental Grand Prix 11 DNFs late drama with engine failures uh, last, last sector overtake for the race lead my punches, my god, it had everything this race. Many doubted whether they could pull off the win here at Spa Francorchamps, but they've done so in spectacular style. Talk to me, Ants. What was it that set them apart from the competition today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, 
And what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack. And having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. Here come today's winning drivers, and what a race it was. This is a team that knows success very well in F1, and they're just itching for even more. Congratulations to the Alpine team for their excellent win. That is an insane win for Giovinazzi. To do it literally, literally, not even in the last sector, the last half of the sector at, at Belgium. That is just massive. And it's it's gutting for Hamilton. I mean, I, I'm sure so many of you would have loved to have seen him be there on the top step because that would have been some story for him to get Ford's first win, not Verstappen. But it's a great day for Ford anyway with the P2 and P4. A lot of points are on the board. Giovinazzi, though, strong win. Second win of the season. That will now see him take the lead of the Drivers World Championship. Nine points ahead of Leclerc. Uh, 13 ahead of myself. 16 now ahead of Gasly as he slips down to P5 from P2 in the championship. Verstappen climbs up to P4, so that's a big race. That is a, that is blown this championship open for the likes of Gio, Leclerc, and even Verstappen's got in the mix there as well. He's, the fact he splits me and Gasly where going into this race, it looked like myself and Gasly were duking out and the others were kind of there in the background, but no, they have firmly stated, but no, those guys have all firmly stamped their, their mark and they're here to stay for the second half of the season and they're still going to be involved in this title fight. But, I mean, that, that race literally had everything. You know, tur lap one, pile up and drama there. Uh, front wings off. You know, having to come back through. Then the, the, the drama with the rain, the trap position. Then we had the crash with Ganyu Joe getting a puncher off that. Making another pit stop. Seeing our teammate then from the top three positions get an engine failure with three laps to go. And then with one sector to go and overtake for the race lead in insane, insane Belgium Grand Prix. Guys, if you have enjoyed that one, hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. If you're around it, then do get subscribed for weekly Formula 1 content. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.